device groups. Device groups are a way in Libri NMS to group devices, hence the name, device groups. Now, in my previous video, I mentioned that locations were a way to group devices based on a certain location, uh, and that is absolutely true, but if you wanted to group devices based on another way, such as maybe you wanted to group all devices with a certain OS, or you wanted to group all devices with a certain version number, you could do that with device groups. Now, I'm going to show you how to create device groups here, but uh, it's pretty much just as simple as doing a search. Um, so if you go to devices and all devices here, you'll see that there is a, um, it's going to list all devices by default, but there is a search bar here where you can filter based on certain values. Uh, so you can filter just on PFSense, hit search, and you will see all the PFSenses here. Uh, we can reset this and go back to all the uh, devices, and we could filter on different other things, such as DNS resolver. Let's just filter on our DNS resolvers. So here's our uh, five DNS resolvers we have here. So what you did here was kind of create an ad hoc device group, whereas this say this uh, search you did here is going to go away eventually when I navigate away from the page or I hit reset. Uh, eventually it's going to go away, but if I want to always kind of save that uh, and always reference it without having to go through this uh, process again. I can create a device group to do that. And it's also good uh, in other uh, uh, ways in Libre NMS. When you create alert rules, you can base them on device groups uh, and some other things you can base on the device groups, especially when you uh, get the API involved. It's very, very helpful to have uh, device groups that return just devices that are, you've already filtered on uh, because you would, otherwise you'd have to do all that filtering in the uh, script you're running that's talking to the API. So here we are going to go to, uh, you saw that we were able to filter just on a certain device here. So if we want to just keep that permanent, we can go to devices, manage devices, and this is where you're going to create your device groups here. So if I wanted to filter just on, let's say a certain version number, I'm going to just filter on this version number right here. This was my version drop down. So these are going to be all the version numbers of all the devices you have in Libri NMS. Uh, you will see a list of every single version number in here. And it might be pretty long the more devices you have because as you can imagine, uh, even though sometimes you'll have the same device, they might be different, uh, you know, the same OS. I have two PF senses here. They might be running two different software versions. So you'll see both software versions for the PF sense here. But let's just say you, you wanted uh, to see all the devices with this OS because maybe this OS has something special you want to alert on or uh, some other reason you just want to filter on this device is all the time so we can just simply grab this string here this is the version number and go to devices manage devices create a new device group uh, we will just call this the name and the description these are fields where you can put whatever you want this is just the name of the device group so when you reference it in other places you're going to be referencing this device group name here so we can go to define rules and when you get this drop down here this is going to list all the different uh, values in the databases these are all different tables and values in there uh, and you can pretty much create device groups on just about anything whereas in the past uh, we did when you were looking here and trying to create kind of a pseudo device group or ad hoc device group, uh, you didn't really have that many options to choose from. There was only a limited set here, but when you create a device group, you can basically create it on anything uh, in the database here. Uh, there's there's tons and tons of values. And, and, and you know, again, not all these values will apply to every single device, but uh, you, you're pretty much, if, if it's getting it um, from that polar script or discovery script, you can pretty much uh, create a device group based on it. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to create a device group uh, that's going to be devices. You can actually just start typing version. Uh, there you go, devices, version. And instead of equals, well, we could do equals because we want to match exactly what this string is. Um, but you could do contains too, and that would also match, but that's a more a more loose. Um, so if I if I put this in here, this says release P1, but maybe maybe there's a P2 eventually in there. Um, I just want to release on anything that's just 2.45. I can just do contains, and anything that has 2.4.5 in the uh, version number of any device in Libri NMS, uh, I will I'll filter just on that. So let let me just put the exact one in there for now. Uh, we'll just keep this the same and we'll do save here. And once you saved it, you can see that there is now one device in this device group here. You click on that, you'll see your device group here. 
Now, if you see our drop down menu under devices has changed a little bit, we now have a device group sub menu here, and this sub menu will list all the device groups you've created so far. Uh, so you can just click on these for easy access to this. And you'll notice that the search bar here still doesn't have any of these selected because this is kind of an addition to these uh, device groups here. So I mean, you could, another way you could go about this is you could actually uh, change this to say devices.os uh, is equal to pfSense. I should change the name. So not confuse you. So also one device matched that because that one device is also uh, it had this version number, but we got rid of that, and now we're just trying to match on the OS, which is also a PS Sense. But now I'm just looking at the PS Senses, but maybe I, I have a bunch of different version numbers in here. I have 2.45, I have 2.44, 2.42. Uh, maybe I want to see all the PS Senses, but I just want to filter on these uh, these version numbers. Then I can hit search here, and now I'm kind of searching within that group. Uh, so you can go in here and um, search for different values based on just the group. So it's kind of like doubling up the amount of uh, way you can search. Now when a device is inside a device group and you click on it, uh, you can actually see that right down here, this box wasn't even here before, but now you can see that what groups it's members of. And a device can be members of more than one group. You remember this is kind of just a filter, so you have the whole you have all the devices in the database, which you can seize by just clicking all devices, or you can just filter on certain devices. Uh, in this case, we did PSNs, but I could create another group here that says, let's just say a local network. And we'll do devices.hostname, and then we'll say contains. Uh, you know what, let's just do say begins with 192.168.1. So this is saying any uh, host name, which is basically the IP address or host name, begins with 192.168.1. And I know that in the terms of this Libre NMS server, uh, if it ever tries to get to that IP, it's going to be on my local network. So if I add a device with this IP, you can assume that it's definitely on my local network. Uh, the good thing about this is, is that once you create this rule, it's always going to be updating devices in here. So if you add something into Libre NMS, it will automatically uh, run this and add it to this uh, group for you. So you can always rest assured that, you know, if you create a rule based on uh, PF Senses, that it will always be the most up to date. It will always have all the uh, PF Senses in here. So you never have to worry about, oh, is it in there or not? Or it's not. Just make your rules uh, very good um, and make sure that you can't, other devices can't slip in there or that you account for all the devices that you want to be in there. So, uh, now if you click on here, we should see a bunch of devices in here. And if you clicked on this one here, you'll see that now it's a member of two uh, uh, device groups here. Now, once you kind of understand how these device groups are built uh, using this SQL kind of language here, uh, you can actually um, extend these uh, a little bit more. So you can add uh, another rule on top of here. So you can say the device hostname begins with 192.168.1, but I also I want to get everything in my local network, but I only want to get devices that SNMP is disabled on, and I want that to be true. So that would be only ping devices in my local network. So I'm going to say local network uh, ping only. So now I filtered down to two devices only because it has to match both these conditions here. So I can see that now I only have two devices in here, which are both the only ping only devices. Now, once you understand this kind of syntax of creating these uh, device groups like this, uh, you might be wondering, um, man, I could just create device groups on literally anything. So I can actually just create a device group on, uh, there we go. Devices status equals zero. So this would be down devices. The device status is one, it means it's up if device status is zero is down. So as you can see here, we have zero because all our devices are up, indicated by this green icon here. So now let's just prove the point that it, devices will be added automatically in here when they go down. So if you 
add another device here. Let's just say a 164.2. And this is not, if I tried to add this right now, it's not going to work because this device doesn't exist anywhere. I don't have it anywhere. Uh, no matter even if I do ping or no SNMP or ping only, it doesn't matter. It's not going to respond. So you can actually do this force add. Uh, and if this is, that comes in handy when you want to add a device that you're planning on putting in later, maybe uh, you just want it in there and get it all set up first. And then once it gets installed, it'll, you know, go ahead and start working. So you can just go ahead and hit add there. And now you can see that we have a device here, but it should be red. It's down. Go to all devices. We can see that there's one device down here now. So now if we go back to uh, manage groups or uh, uh, you can go to manage groups. You'll see now now there's one device in the device status equals zero group, which is devices down. Uh, so we can go in here, devices down. And so that's kind of actually a way that you created an alert. Uh, there's really no difference. Uh, once you understand how to do these device groups and create these, alert rules are pretty much the same thing. In fact, if you look at this here, you know, devices.hotname begins with 192.168.1. If I go into alert rules here and I create a new alert rule, and doesn't this look familiar? It's the exact same uh, fields in the database that we can filter on. Uh, so I don't want to get into alert rules right now because that's going to be a whole other video. So I will just bypass that for later. Uh, and that pretty much wraps it up for device groups here. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave a comment or subscribe. Thanks.